fuck it. Is it based? Is it based? The comics are forming a union. Hey guys, this is Neon, and I'm actually re-recording the beginning of this video. Um, Image Comics is going to unionize, right? Uh, fuck yeah. They just announced it, had uh, some people- It's about fucking time. Unions are amazing for the workers. All right, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting out, as someone who's in a union, who has worked around unions his whole life, they are amazing for the workers. I have yet to hear of a bad union outside the police unions. And even they're good unions for what they're there for. They protect the cops, even when the cops are obviously at fault. But, like, unions are amazing for working class. Good. We should see a fucking a bump in um, standard of living. People send us links to this, including Black Sage D. Hat tip to him. And Black Sage D, for those who don't know, is a dumbass neo-Confederate black guy who got fucking crushed three times on Twitter for trying to gatekeep anime. And it's fucking hilarious every time he gets fucking crushed because he is literally just a chud who cries about no titties. Like, he doesn't care about, like, stories being censored. He doesn't care about um, art itself being censored. No, he just cares about the titties and ass. Like, he is a coomer who just cares about the titties and ass. Every he doesn't care about nothing else. He just cares about those. And then he tries to gatekeep anime every so often. And then, like, everybody who likes anime just destroys him wholly. And then I dug into his behavior, and he's literally a fucking neo-confederate. Which is always hilarious to find out when these guys are black, because if the confederacy was still around, you would not have rights. You would still be, like, well, you'd be in a factory right now, enslaved still. Because that was, like, their whole thing. To keep the slavery going, to expand it and all that. Like, you would not have the same rights you would have now. Why are you defending these assholes who hated your guts to this day? <laughs> but, yeah, he got fucking destroyed. And I read through it. I'm like, okay, this is okay. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And I got to the very last thing in their list of demands. And I have to lead with this because this is what this is all about. This is exactly ah, like... I see the problem here. Diversity. It has that word in it. Kickstarter. The reason, the main reason they are unionizing is this. Um, they want Image Comics... Good job. <laughs> ...to have a renewed commitment to company values through the addition of a collective voting option to immediately cancel publication of any title whose creators have been found to have engaged in abuse, sexual assault, racism, xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, ableism, etc. But that's pretty broad. Until such a time... No, it's not. As said creators I mean, have... I mean, it's listed here. It's pretty clear what they mean by etc. ...engaged in meaningful reparations toward... The only way this would be broad is if they like behavior in which we do not like a cedra. That kind of thing. That would be very vague and broad and I would not care for it. But this is pretty limiting in what they're talking about. The affected persons. Basically. Um, in fact, this could even go out to um, racism against like white people. And racism against um, the politics of people in a way. Not racism, but like um, discrimination and such. Like this could be okay for people on his side of the aisle too. Image Comics staff want the ability to cancel any creator and any book based on what this group feels at any particular point in time. And while I, I do agree in some cases with unions, in some industries where employees are legitimately overworked and abused, I think the video game industry... Pretty much every industry in the United States is like this. There's not a single one that's not overworked, underpaid, the only people being underpaid and under um, overpaid and underworked right now are CEOs. If you're below that level, you're overworked and underpaid for your labor. Three, definitely, I, I think that they are they're abused. They're staffers. This is basically everybody who signed this wants editorial input in all the image books, and anybody can be canceled. They want it in writing that they can cancel any book, just like Kickstarter. I think it's going to end just like Kickstarter, where they use the pandemic to get rid of a lot of their unionized employees. And all I can say is good luck with that. So on with the video.
<laughs> Unironically tell the workers to shove it because he doesn't like their politics. A comic book union. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting. We've talked about, uh, you know, comic book publishers, creators, kicking around the idea of unions for the last couple of years. And it's weird that they want to unionize when comic book sales are not what they used to be, when the money is not what it used to be. And, uh, you know, the working conditions, uh, I could argue for, you know, comic book creators, you know, not terrible. It's not like you're being asked to, to go down to a coal mine. Um, we had an interesting conversation with some Twitty at You know, you're not dying to chemical fumes being crushed in a cave in. I don't know why you're complaining about your job. What could possibly happen at your job to cause you problems? I don't know. Exhaustion, overwork, crunch time, um, sickness. You're not allowed to take a day, sick day. Usually, they uh, make you work through it. Like, it's not just physically that you can break down. It's mentally as well. In fact, it's easier to break somebody mentally than physically. Because guess what? You can heal a broken arm. We do it all the time. It's a pretty simple process. If you break somebody mentally, working them too hard, they usually don't recover very fast. It takes years. Because that damage doesn't go away. It stays with them. Um, it's common in the, like the military. It, PTSD, it's pretty common. Mental and emotional damage lasts. It's the same for, like, job sites. There are people who break now because they were just overworked to the point where they, they exhaust themselves and break down. They spend months or years receiving treatment for that, if they can afford treatment. Otherwise, they just, they're, they're broken. You can't fix it. But, like, this is so fucking stupid. Like, the blue-collar shit where there's like, oh, you work out in a coal mine. You're blue-collar. That's a good j job. And they ignore, like, retail workers, uh, mechanics. Um, factory workers, warehouse workers, drivers, flight attendants, all that shit. Like, fuck you. It's the other day about the working conditions in Western comics versus uh, Japan in manga. And uh, I'm going to reiterate, uh, in Japan, they work very, very long hours. They work very hard. I'm not saying that Western comic book creators don't work hard. Uh, I'm just saying that they don't work nearly as many hours on average as their Japanese counterparts that the Japanese counterparts by the way die at the age of 50 because their bodies give out who the dude writing one piece in that video he's like in the hospital constantly this this is not acceptable they should really do something about it over there being said the comic book industry is made up of mostly freelance workers you're a contractor you're like a plumber you're you know, plumbing somebody else's comic book uh, series or whatever, and you know, jobs come and go. People aren't working at the comic book factory for the most part, unless you're editorial or sales or you know, a handful of people at these companies that actually are salaried full-time employees. So where the the crunch happens, usually it falls on the freelancers. So we're going to look at what the uh, Comic Book Workers United has to say. It's weird that it's Image Comics, too. Because Image Comics is made up of a bunch of smaller studios. It's not like the, the Image Comics factory that cranks out all these books. Image is a publisher and a facilitator and a distributor of comics, but it really is a bunch of smaller studios like Todd McFarlane's stuff and, and uh, all of that. So let's talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop. Uh, someone who worked in comics full time for a number of years, uh, you know, as a freelancer, contractor, right? Um, I would actually say that people that work in the video game industry on average have it much, much harder. The crunch time is much more severe. The demands are much more severe. Um, and that being said, you know, a lot of the work that, you know, we enjoy, whether it's video games or animation or comic books is, you know, created by people that are not paid as well as they probably should be. Um, you know, people who are working ridiculous hours to get stuff out on deadline, but at least with video games and animation, the money is there. The financial incentive is there. That is not the case with the Western comic book industry. Uh, the money is kind of drying up, but this probably comes right on the, the heels of Striketober where everybody's going on strike. And uh, you know, I want to be clear before I get into this that I am not anti-union. Uh, I've never said that I'm anti-union. I have 
concerns about people forming unions for industries such as comics or you know look at kickstarter and all that where you're basically you're a white collar office worker right or you're a freelancer whatever so he's anti-union for people he doesn't like which means he's just anti-union now if you were being sent to work in dangerous conditions down in the coal mine or something or you know you were being completely exploited you see you haven't lost a leg working at your job in 40 years yeah you've had four ulcers three heart attacks five strokes and you're now bedridden for the rest of your life but you don't need a union how dare you there are people who need it more than you how dare you ask for better condition you insignificant peasant um you know i think that you do need to unionize that's the reason that unions you know came into existence but like you know in the case of kickstarter unions were created because of socialism literally communists that's where unions come from. Order. They wanted to be able to dick. It's literally about taking the means of production for yourself. That's what they're there for. Dictate the kinds of content that Kickstarter published or helped publish by by allowing certain creators on their platform, uh, certain projects on their platform, and that's not really the purpose of a union. You know, if you want to dictate the kinds of content that goes onto a platform, then go start your own company. It's up to the people that own the company, that operate the company, uh, to determine what is and what is not acceptable. And your job as an employee is to basically carry out their marching orders. That Does this guy cry about Hobby Lobby? Who forced themselves into every aspect of their employee's life, dictating everything to them from the top down? Or just some, something that he only applies when it comes from the employees having demands. That's the reality of the situation, right? Now, again, back to this, comic book workers, for the most part, are independent contractors. They're self-employed. They have their own um, micro companies, I guess. Um, a lot of them pay their own health insurance. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's not uh, exploitive in some ways. But it is what it is, and that's what the economics of the comic book industry uh, can handle. And I think what could potentially happen if more comic book creators unionize is the companies that were on the fence about floppy comics anyway, like Disney, like Warner Brothers, you know, DC, they might just decide this is the tipping point. This is it. Like, okay, we were already kind of iffy about making comics. Now it's going to cost us a lot more to make comics. So let's just not make as many comics. Let's not make as many. We've got decades of stuff we can just reprint. The new stuff's not selling as well anyway. And if we need new ideas, we'll just uh, we'll just hire writers from Hollywood to come up with new ideas, or we'll we'll hire a. The comic book industry is fine. It's doing just about as good as every other printed media industry. But that's the thing. It's printed media. That's why it's doing. That's why it's on the downturn. People don't want to carry around a thousand comic books. Their digital sales are probably doing better than most. Because you can sell something digitally, they can just look at it on their fucking tablet or their phone. That's where these guys should be focusing more on. Instead of printing more, they should be focusing on making their own platforms to sell their comic books digitally so that you can just have it like on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone or something. That that's where most of the sales are gonna be from now on. Again, because like like, even books are like this now. Like, most book sales are not paper. They're digital. Things like Kindle, um, Audible, that kind of shit. I think comic books are a bit too slow to adapt to this right now. Like, they're they're doing it somewhat. I know there's, like, web comics are a thing, but, like, like the major publishers are kind of stuck. They want to keep printing stuff, which is good limited. But given the situation, you might want to focus more on, like, digital kind of stuff. A way that the people working on, uh, you know, the top to the top shelf writers working at Marvel and DC. Uh, anyway, this is the tweet thread. Have to give a hat tip to Black Sage D who uh, sent this over to me. I didn't even see this was a thing. Comic Book Workers United. Let's see what this has to say. We, the workers of Image Comics, have formed a union uh, represented by CWA Union for a more just comic book industry for all. So this is 
uh, the same people that were behind, I think, I want to say a lot of the uh, the gaming unions and the uh, blogger unions, the creative uh, union, if I remember correctly. For years, comics publishing workers have watched our professional efforts support creators and delight readers. True. Sadly, we have also watched the same labor be taken for granted at best and exploited at worst. Keeping our heads above water was the new normal before the pandemic, and since its onset, we've been expected to take on even larger workloads with fewer resources. Um, our workforce in the comic book and publishing industry as a whole is overtaxed and undervalued. It's also declining. It's losing ground to manga. I I'm sorry. Uh it's not. Again, he's looking at two industries that are vastly different for very different reasons. Comic books here in the West are monthly. Comic books in the East are weekly or bi-weekly. They pump out a ton. So yeah, their sales are going to be higher because they're literally spamming the stuff. If you want to compare them on who's selling better, look at a monthly publication versus a monthly publication. Don't do monthly versus weekly. The weekly has more product. It will have more sales. It's got nothing to do with the... the fuck, what's it called? I've completely brain farted on what it means. Anyway, like which one is better and which one's worse? It's, it's got nothing to do with that. It's the fact that manga sells, like, tons of copies a, a week. They're weekly. You know, it's why they have ridiculous, like, you know, this is this is uh, fucking manga 1039. We're, we're in the middle of, like, the 50th thousandth arc. Instead of, like, Batman has an issue every month, it sometimes runs for three or four months. Up to a year, maybe. And then, like, crossovers and shit, like. You can't compare the two just based on how they're being created and sold. I'm trying to find a better. It's like comparing a Western manufacturer who creates a decent sized truck, right? It's just a truck. It creates the trucks. It can make about five a day. They sell for a reasonable price. They're just a truck. Versus an Eastern manufacturer who sell who makes about twenty or thirty a day. They're okay. But they can make 30 of them a day, so they're selling more. Like, the sales are, are not... It's not got nothing to do with the quality, that's the word, of the product. It's got to do with how much they're making. Yeah, the people making more are going to sell more. That's, the, like, the whole point of this. Uh, this is detrimental, not only to general staff, but to the creators we are paid to serve and the audiences they, in turn, work to entertain. Our labor is integral to the comic book industry. It requires specialized skills, dedication, and makes quality publishing. If this seems kind of weird to say to you, say for you, by the way, it's because in the U.S., contractors have a very specific criteria. They can't be integral to the business. Um, they it shouldn't be. It shouldn't require like um, like they can't make demands out of the contractor. They can come and go as they please. They can work when they want, however they want, you know, within um, certain criteria. Now, if you're um, – if the labor you perform for the company is um, integral to the company's success, they can't really classify you as a contractor. You have to be a full-time employee by law. It's why places like the WWE are kind of in trouble right now because their wrestlers are contractors. Not employees. And because of that, they don't have a lot of benefits. They don't have a lot of control for the most part. And there's been a lot of controversy around it. Um, the government has kind of like pointed out like you can't really be doing this before, but they've been paid off. There's been proof they've been paid off. But like, yeah, you can't really call somebody who is integral to your operation a contractor. They have to be an employee by law possible a lot of likes in real time going up on this because everybody wants to hear that they're irreplaceable and unfortunately and this is coming from a creative this is coming directly from a creative uh unfortunately that is not the case anybody can be replaced at any time it might not be ideal they might find somebody that's maybe not as good or maybe their style is very different i would say that a specialized skill like this um that requires this kind of thing 
you aren't as replaceable as, say, a general laborer. Like, I could be replaced tomorrow. No problem. They can bring somebody and train them in a day. I could be replaced. They're not allowed to because I have a union, but it can be done. Now, more specialized things like drawing, story writing, um, marketing, you know, specialized labor like welders. Um, construction workers are also, to an extent, this. Um, equipment operators, they require a special set of skills that uh, take time to train. They're not really replaceable in the way that we know it. Like, yeah, can they be replaced? It takes time. You don't want to do it. It'll hurt you in the long run to keep replacing them. Much in the same way, like, I would consider these workers to be somewhat irreplaceable because, yeah, I could probably find people to do their jobs, but it would be counterproductive in every way. Or whatever. But um, creatives aren't as special as we're told when we're in school. And this is a harsh reality. You're going you're gonna to find this out and take it from an old dog here, right? Uh, the harsh reality is that you're, in the eyes of your corporate uh, overlords, you are not a special snowflake. I'm not a special snowflake. Anybody can be replaced. I mean, looking at your channel, you are definitely a snowflake. At any time, you know, uh, it, it just, it is what it is. It is what it is. That being said, let's, let's go on. Let's go on. Let's continue. Uh, we love what we do, but loving what you do doesn't mean you can't or shouldn't ask for improvements to your working conditions. Uh, well, stay off Twitter. You'd probably get more done. <laughs> it is with, with this in mind and with great hope for the future of Image Comics and the comic book industry itself that we announce our intent to form a union and request voluntary recognition. This should not be radical or revolutionary and is, in fact, a natural development for a company that started the way Image Comics did. With a bunch of individual creators and their own studios and their own mini companies publishing comics under one umbrella, I don't understand how this is going to work exactly, but okay. In the early stages of organizing, we look to Image's founders for inspiration. Their dreams of self-determination and a more equitable treatment in the industry they loved and helped make successful are also our dreams. Um, then create your own book and, and start your own little publishing outfit under the Image Comics umbrella? I don't know. Don't listen. You don't like what you work at? Make your own fucking company. How dare you ask to be treated like a human being, you scum. Can we drop this guy off a fucking building? Can we, can we just do that? Just get rid of him? He's obviously not contributing anything. He's a dumb motherfucker. His genes will lead to nothing but trouble. Can we just drop him off a building already? To me, I'm old. We are honored to grow their legacy by taking this step to give all comic book industry professionals, regardless of title, the same rights, guarantees, security, and protections which the founders sought when they broke away from the big two to start their own company. In fact, several months into our organizing efforts, Jim Valentino made a comment. I'm curious. Okay, so it makes more sense now. They literally broke away from um, bigger comic book um, publishers because they felt they were being treated wrongly with this bullshit right here. Work for hire. Which is the whole fucking thing. And they were not being compensated for their work. So they all left and formed their own group. They did it classy too. They met with fucking editor and chiefs and shit and like, no, we're done. And they broke off to make their own. Nice. Image would not own the creator's work. The creator would. Would own no intellectual property except for the company trademarks, its name, and its logo. No image partner would interfere creative or friendship with any other partner's work. So, yeah, they basically just, um... It's just a group that decided to publish their own shit and give the creators full control of their, um, work. The IP belongs to the creator, not to the company. Which is one of the big reasons why they all took off. Interesting. So why is he confused by them leaving because of this? Yeah, they left because they were being mistreated. They were literally being mistreated by, like, their publishers, so they left and make their own company. That's, like, the, how this founding went. The two big, I guess, in this case would be Marvel and DC. So they broke away from those two to make their own.
keep control of their own stuff to get treated properly. So what we have here, workers who did not like being treated the way they were, so they broke away and made their own company. They did the thing he said that they should just do. Okay. They literally broke away, did their own company. And yeah, this would be in the spirit of the original MX comic books and the founders who broke away from big companies because they were being mistreated. This makes perfect sense. Why were they not a union to start out with? Comment on social media celebrating union accomplishments. That was the moment we knew this could work. So he's going to have to pay you more. <laughs> Anyway, despite years of union busting and anti-organization sentiments in the American workforce, we know that Image has at its heart a desire to be first when it comes to doing the right thing for comic workers. That's why we know we'll win, because our success is the company's success. Our success is the creator's success. Our success is the reader's success. Uh, find out more and show your support. Uh, drawn in solidarity. Uh, no, look at this babe. Okay. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Union membership. <laughs> Nice, I love it. Okay, um... Embrace the meme. Embrace the meme! I... I am skeptical. Let me oh, let me put God. it to you this way. I am skeptical. I do know that there are long hours uh, in the comic book industry. Again, though, you're a freelancer. You're, a lot of times, you're asked to produce the impossible in an impossibly short amount of time. I mean, I've literally... I've had gigs I've taken where I've had to like sleep in the chair in the living room for like two hours to go back to work on something to meet deadlines. That being said, I'm like, how is this going to, how are you going to get freelancers into a union? And is this going to incentivize companies like again, Disney and DC to just do an end run around these creators? Oh, all the American creators are unionizing. Uh, their demands are ridiculous. Um, their demands are literally be treated like a human being. That's not ridiculous. That should be the fucking standard. And before he even tries it, no, you can't go anywhere else. Because you have to treat other workers better. The U.S. has a problem with its labor and that it is devalued to the point where they are treated like shit. If you go to any other country and demand the same labor that they demand from Americans, you will get told to go fuck yourself. Or you have to subsist on fucking shit labor from, like, third world countries that are not guaranteed to be a thing. It's a fucking minefield. You can exploit the American workers. You can pay decent wages for the Americans. Or you can pay even more extravagant raises, um, wages for, like, Europeans. That's it. Those are your three options. And when you unionize here in America, you're down to two. You can pay the Americans a decent wage and treat them well. Or you can do it to the Europeans. Those are your only real options. Because I can tell you right now, you're not going to find a lot of fucking, like, Japanese or Chinese people who are going to be volunteering for this shit. They're not going to do it. Like, a lot of the Chinese can't do it. Because the Chinese and the Americans hate each other. And a lot of the Japanese people don't want nothing to do with you. Being treated like a person is not outrageous. It is the standard. And the sooner it becomes a standard in the United States, the better. We're just going to step over them and get more people from the Philippines or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not dismissing it you know, out of hand, but I just don't see logically how this is going to work. We're talking about... Here's the logic. How's that going to go for the PR of your company that you're telling American workers to get shut for wanting to be treated fairly and going to a bunch of foreigners who are, one, unreliable, let's be honest, because you're working outside of the country. Their laws apply. Your laws now apply. You have to sync up those two laws. And that doesn't always work well for companies, as we found out. It's why a lot of companies don't stay in two different nations. They go to one. Like, you might as well just be paying the Americans better. An industry that's in decline. Pay Not in decline. Any more than any other w fucking printed media. Age rates are stagnant. New readers are not being cultivated. Comic shops are closing. The distribution is a nightmare. There's not much mo more money flowing. That for me personally, I would be like, you get yourself an agent, get yourself a good agent, and you renegotiate your deals if Disney or Warner decide they want to make your stuff into a movie. So he wants you to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for an agent that can negotiate with Disney. 
you might as well just put a gun in your mouth. Because they're just going to kill you. Even if your agent is that good, they're just going to whack you. They're going to find you floating down the river with a fucking Mickey Mouse hat on. Movie, you make sure your ass is protected that you get a bigger cut. I mean, I don't agree that, that Disney uh, should go make a billion dollars off of Captain America and, and uh, you know, the people that worked on the Winter Soldier book only get like $5,000. But here he is saying like, well, if you demand more money, they should just go to the Philippines and get them and pay them next to nothing. They should pay them less and take more money. Like he's trying to argue both ends of this and he's sounding like a fucking moron. You know, as a bonus, like, hey, thank you. And if you're lucky, you get invited to the premiere and you get a name in the credits or some shit like that. I don't agree with that. Uh, I really don't. But I don't think unionizing is, is necessarily going to stop that. Uh, I really don't. I think what it's going to do is it's actually going to force more small publishers uh, out of business. And, uh, and then eventually, you know, again, just my theory, uh, you know, eventually Disney and Warner are going to be like, yep, this isn't... Uh, this isn't working for us. I, I, I would not be surprised. I mean, I could be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like Todd McFarlane, who's one of the biggest publishers or, or micro companies under that image umbrella right now, is like, yep, you know, maybe it's time to just take uh, McFarlane Productions and, and move it into its own thing and not publish through, through Image anymore, you know, if, if everybody's union and it's going to cost me three times as much. I don't know. I'm just saying it never goes the way you think it's going to go. It sounds good on paper. Uh, look at Kickstarter. They unionize and what they do. They use the pandemic as an excuse to get rid of a bunch of unionized employees. You know, uh, it, it never goes the way you think it's going to. Coming from Bleeding Cool. Trust. Remember all that anti-union propaganda I looked at? He sounds just like those people in that fucking in the broadcast. You can unionize if you want, but we're going to make you pay for it. So I don't see why you would want to bother. Like, was he a fucking scab for his corporation, too? Trusted, trusted journalist, uh, Rich Johnson over at uh, Bleeding Cool. Image Comics staffers form a union, Comic Book Workers United. Uh, today, Comic Book Workers United announced themselves as a union made up of staffers, staffers working at Image Comics. Okay, so we're talking like what? Editors, marketing people, etc. Uh, they voted by a supermajority to declare the formation of a union in a statement they declared, and we read all that. So if they're staffers, not freelancers, the, the staffers aren't the ones actually making the content. Really, they're kind of shepherding the content, but they're not actually uh, making it. That would be the... I mean, staffer is an umbrella term for pretty much anybody on staff. That's kind of what it means. I don't know where he gets that it's just the editors. Freelancers, the writers and the artists. A statement was signed by Ryan Brewer, Leanna Conter, Marla uh, Isaac, Drew Fitzgerald, Melissa Gifford, Chloe Ramos, Trisha Ramos... Uh, John Schlafman and Erica Schnatz. They have also issued the following goals and are asking people to sign a statement of support. Here are their goals. Uh, to foster a more competitive industry as a whole. Well, <laughs> you have no problem there. Through salary and workload transparency for all existing and proposed job titles, employees industry-wide should know what they and their peers are working for and what they can expect from future employment. Improve staff morale through annual staff and management reviews to assess performance, workload, and whether there is a clear need to expand a department, craft a new role, or increase compensation for employees who've taken on a larger quantity or more complex suite of tasks. Again, this seems like it only affects editorial. And I'm not saying maybe editors, salary editors. Wait, no, it doesn't. Employees industry-wide. It literally says that. Like, what are you talking about? Like, they even distinguish between staff and management, which would be like editors, and staff, which is like everybody underneath editors, like artists, um, storyboarders, that kind of thing. Everybody down to the janitor. Editors aren't uh, overworked. I know at Marvel, they've been spreading people pretty thin, as I understand it, trying to save money. I don't think this is going to help their case. Uh, and really, the brunt of the work, most of the work, is freelancers, contractors. And this doesn't seem like this is going to help them at all, does it? It seems like this is the, uh, the uh, editorial, um, you know, management level people, but it's not going to help the grunts that are pulling the all-nighters, uh, the people who are getting, you know, subpar page rates, you know. Uh, you know, usually known as staff. 
et cetera, et cetera. It's still going to be business as usual. If I thought he was smarter than he is, like if I honestly thought he was smart, I think he was trying to do like um, a divide here. Like they tried to do with BLM where it's like, you see, they talk about the, the, the whole group of people. What they really mean is just these people over here. Therefore, you should hate them because they don't include you in the good group of people. You're in the bad group of people. I don't think he's that smart. I think he's just dumb. And this is just a coincidence. But, like, anybody's smarter than this, and I would be wary of the words he was using more. Usual for them, as far as I can tell. Uh, two, the creation of a more transparent company culture through monthly all-hands meetings so all staff can better understand both the current and future priorities, responsibilities, and workloads of other departments. Increased knowledge retention through the implementation of detailed record-keeping and procedure doc. This sounds like... It sounds like 101 for any company. I mean, hey, if you ever needed proof that the comic book industry didn't work like a regular company, this this is it right here. Because if you worked for a regular company with a bunch of employees, they they usually do monthly or weekly meetings. They usually No, they don't. No, they don't. No, no. No, they don't. I think there's a um, a twice yearly meeting for like management and that's it. Most companies don't do like monthly meetings and shit like this. They'll do, like, safety meetings or stuff like that if something happens, but most companies don't work like this. Like, it is literally, something bad happened yesterday. We need to have a meeting about it today. Otherwise, no meetings happen because it takes away time from working, and that's the most important thing at work for most people. Usually tell everybody what's going on. Uh, you know, most jobs I've worked at, you know, white-collar jobs I've worked at, Monday mornings we would have an all-hands meeting, and everybody would sit down and go department department by department, and everybody would kind of go around the table and say where we're at with whatever projects. we're. See, he's never worked a real job. He's always worked like he wore a suit and tie. He's never worked an actual job, so he doesn't know. No, we don't have an all-hands meeting. That wasn't an all-hands meeting, by the way, what he did. That was just a fucking management meeting, which means it was management people talking about management things that they might know what's happening in the department, but they probably don't because they don't have any, like, team leads or actual employees in there. Because I've had to sit in on some of these meetings before. One of my companies actually had, like, they'd grab an employee off the line and have them sit in with the um, the department head. And the department head would ask, would turn to me and, like, would ask the employee questions, like, okay, what's happening? Is there any concerns with the employees? What is this happening? Because they don't know. And the team leads sometimes don't know because they're very busy. So they would just grab an employee who had the time to answer the questions. Like, I have never heard of it in a company that did that. It is literally mostly like these are just management meetings where they just kind of just generally talk about like, okay, I think we can do this or that. It's, there's not, that's not an all hands meeting. We we're working on. That's actually pretty normal. Uh, increased knowledge retention, okay. Improved career mobility for staff through stricter Wait, adherence to the company. Why'd you skip this? Knowledge retention through the implementation of detailed record keeping and uh, procedure documentation for all tasks deemed essential to any given role. These documents are including detailing and explicit um, descriptions and instructions for all expected job duties. Why do you skip over this? stated intent to offer open positions up to qualified existing employees prior to opening them up to the public. This is interesting. So you can't have some big name creative come over here and, and become the head of the company, you know, with proven sales records and, until you offer it to somebody who got a gig working an image right out of college. You know, I don't know. Uh, the continuation. He's so fucking stupid. He's so fucking stupid. Yeah, promote from within. Don't grab some dumbass out of college and give them the job right away. Promote from within. Somebody who knows the company as it is. That is better than grabbing some nobody from college. Creation of remote work for any employee who requests it and the creation of a detailed policy outlining how the company provides reasonable accommodations. Um, so we all want to work remotely. Better... I like how we skipped over the last bit, last bit where he talks about how the employees are shouldering a lot of the um, expensive for utilities and stuff now that they have to work from home. Yeah, the company should have to pay for these things. If it's vital for your job, your company should have to pay for it if you're working remotely. 
and it does make a good point. Like, you don't need to buy a central office space if you're doing this. If you can work from home, why would you spend money on a building that has to be, you know, climate controlled? Um, you have to pay for storage. You have to pay for internet. You have to pay for um, electricity. All this other shit. Like, just if they can work from home, just pay them to work from home and then, like, pay for their utility bills to an extent so that you cover what they're using for the job that you have given them. It was it's it's provably cheaper, by the way, to do this than it is to like have a centralized building, fill it for workers every day, pay all that bills. No, just pay just pay your employee employees to work from home. Pay for some of the utilities that cover the cost from you doing business from that home. And like you cut out a ton of shit. Especially with like accidents and stuff. You don't have to worry about that insurance anymore. That's gone because they're now working from home. Therefore you're not responsible. What happens at their home is their problem. So you save a ton of fucking cash doing this. A lot of office jobs are, like, removing the centralized place now. Um, they're downgrading. Here in um, where I live, we have um, – it's an IT place. But they've completely removed their building. They've shut down. They have moved to a small, like, um, shared office space where they have, like, the regional rep and, like, two secretaries. And the rest is, like, work-from-home stuff. And apparently, according to him, it saved them, like, 60% of their fucking um, expenses. And I believe the workers did get a raise. I can't remember how much it was. It wasn't a lot, but they did get, like, a raise because they had, cause they could cut, like, um, insurance and shit from it because they no longer had to worry about the employee getting hurt. Oh, well, freelancers already do. Be a freelancer. Oh my God, that's what they'll do. They'll just be like, yep, everybody's a freelance editor now. Nobody's nobody's salaried. You're all freelance. You can work at home if you want to. That's it. Better overall product through the immediate addition of staff, particularly in production and marketing departments. Our creators, retailers, and readers can expect white glove attention for all the books we publish. Books which will go to press with fewer errors, fewer delays, and a more robust marketing presence. If they're paying you more then they're not going to be paying the marketing more. Market market them to who? There are fewer comic shops. I mean, I'm not saying these aren't problems. I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if this has been thought through uh, as well. <laughs> See, the reason why he doesn't understand this is because, again, he's, 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 he's got this narrative that the comic book industry is on the downturn. There's like three shops left in the whole United States. There's no business for them. They're crashing. They'll die any day now. They're, they're completely destroyed. They're gone forever. They'll never return. There's no market out. It's it's bullshit. There's still a market. People are still buying these things. And once you get past that, you realize how stupid this guy sounds. They just want to unionize for reasons because we want to have more. We want to know what's going on. We want to have more say in things, and we want to work at home. A long-term, actionable plan to address the overall lack of diversity in both general staff and management. There we go. And the stories we publish can only be improved by staffing our organization in a way that more accurately reflects the demographics of our creators, our readership, and the nation as a whole. Renewed commitment to company values through the addition of a collective voting option. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here it is, guys. Here it is. Here it is. The very last thing. They want to go all Kickstarter. Renewed commitment to company values through the addition of a collective voting option to immediately cancel publication of any title whose creators have been found to have engaged in abuse, sexual assault, racism, and xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, ableism. See, he's mad because he's done all these at one point. I guarantee you until such a time as said creators have engaged in meaningful reparations. To I would also not be surprised if this was like the thing they put forward to pull off the table. What unions will do is before when they form and they start negotiating, they'll put something really stupid up there so the company can like, no, you're not having that. And they go, okay, now we can start agreeing on what we do actually want. You, we've given you this, now give us these. Board effect. Like, I'm not saying that's what happened, but I would not be shocked if this was that part of it people one union actually said that they wanted every employee to get a free gerbil i'm not kidding they requested a free gerbil per employee it was immediately removed from the table and they immediately asked for something in return <laughs> negotiation 101 be very silly
it gets everybody laughing. It is exactly like Kickstarter. Good fucking luck with this. It's not going to fly. Well, if it does. You got triggered by the diversity. Image, you're, you're done. You're done. Because they want the ability to veto projects. They want the, the ability. They want in writing that they can cancel people. In writing. You know, and Image is not a, a comic book factory. It's a bunch of independent creators and independent studios publishing under one umbrella. If I were an Image creator at this point, just... He keeps saying that, but that's like every publisher. Like, every publisher is that. They don't have, like, a factory where they got, like, people chained to the desk making these comic books. They are just a bunch of little people under one umbrella. Even though I don't think I have any problem with uh, any anybody I've worked with in this regard, I would pull out because I'm like, um, I could tell you right now, I know you've been this, that, 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 and that. Cannot confirm on these two, but given your attitude toward women at times, I would not be, um, be amazed if this was a thing. I have no proof, but I have seen, well, pretty much anything from here to there. Definitely, probably this a little bit. Definitely this, because you agreed with um, Frank Miller, his little comic book, which, if you're okay with it, you kind of support it. And you've told an ableist joke, so there. Your woke points are minus a thousand. I am not going to let... A then again, the fact that I said the N-word on Twitter like two weeks ago makes me about a minus a million, so he's doing better than me. A bunch of people, freaking peanut gallery, decide what we can and can't publish. <laughs> Like the ancient emperors of Rome, they put out their thumbs in one big gesture. You made a joke about a man in a wheelchair ten years ago. Thumb down. And then the great sword of Damocles comes down and cleaves him in, in, and cleaves him in twain. My tongue went full dumb there. <laughs> it went up into my teeth for some reason. Uh, I think this is, this is not going to go well. This is not going to go the well, they think. Yeah, here, I see very little about actual working conditions and a lot that sounds like they just want to do management's job. Somebody who's never worked before in their life. Um, good luck with that. Good luck with that. I, I actually, because of that last clause there, I think you're going to see a lot of people leave Image. Uh, yeah, yeah. Probably not. It's not real hard to not be any of those things, actually. I, I wouldn't agree with that. I'd be They think it's everybody because they do it constantly, but like, most people are none of those things. Or it's just generally like, oh, you said something 20 years ago. I don't care. Like, no, it's because... usually when somebody, like, doubles down like Dave Chappelle did that people get really mad. Like, if he just said, yeah, it was kind of transphobic. I didn't mean it to come out that way. I'm sorry. And moved on. Most people probably wouldn't have been mad. But he, like, double and triple down constantly just to be a dick. And that's kind of what pisses people off. It's not a mistake that pisses people off. It's when it's it's purposeful behavior meant to do a certain thing. That's when the anger comes out. You guys, you know what what actually do you consider racist, homophobic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? You know, um, exactly like Kickstarter, and it's going to end exactly like Kickstarter, where they're going to find a reason to get rid of these people. You watch. You watch. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news. It's just him being mad about a union being...